Well, good morning, everyone. Thomas Montgomery here. We get together most weekday mornings at 8 o'clock Central to talk about strategies, tips, techniques, share success stories, and support each of you. Today is Friday, September 13th, 2024. So I should be sharing my screen. I'm on 509pacific.org. Well, why are we on 509pacific.org? Well, it is a very good resource site. And if you are someone looking for capital to start or grow a business, I'll show you some of the resources that's available. And if you are someone that is looking to get paid to help others improve their financial literacy and increase their access to capital, I'll show you how to get plugged into that. So 509pacific.org, we're a 501c3 nonprofit. You have our phone number and our contact information here. Our navigation bar is at the bottom of the page. So what we're going to do is we're going to start over here to the right on the SBA checklist. So when we applied for the grant, and, and I'll tell a lot of you ask about grants. It seems like uh, a, a great topic of interest. Typically, it's it's near impossible to get grants if you have a for-profit entity, but if you have a non-for-profit, then grants are typically available. So if you would like any assistance setting up a nonprofit to get grants for yourself, we can help you do that. But that's not the point. So, but when we applied for one of our several grants we received, it was designed to help prepare clients for business funding. Now let's talk about why, because I, I think the why is the question that, that if you understand, the rest makes sense. So specifically, there are a lot of small business owners, entrepreneurs, whatever label you want to give them, that want to need capital. That, that I believe is, I'll make this a little larger, that's a factual statement. A lot of, of people needing money. Also, there are a lot of banks and credit unions and alternative lenders. So there's lots of money. So isn't it interesting that you have two parties of a potential transaction, but they're not working together as often as they would like? Think about what Walmart does or Amazon. Walmart or Amazon connects buyers and sellers. If you wanted to become one of our distribution partners, that's really what you and I do is we connect the lenders with the borrowers, but with capital, all capitalization, B-U-T, but the underlying problem is not that borrowers can't find lenders. That's not a challenge. The problem is typically the borrowers are not qualified for the loans. They're not what we call fundable, F-U-N-D-A-B-L-E, not fundable. So there are certainly many different types of funding for businesses. SBA is one category, but certainly not the only category. Uh, the three of us that form the nonprofit, we all came from the SBA. We all used to work as SBA employees, so we know it pretty well. SBA loans are attractive, but they're not the right fit for everyone. So uh, we're not restricted to helping people only for an SBA loan, but since SBA loans are relatively straightforward to get, if you're fundable, which we'll go through, then we can certainly get a large amount. And there's different types of SBA loans, but that's not our point today. Our point is to navigate to the checklist page of the website. And then this step two is what's really important. And this is equally important if you're someone looking for money yourself or if you're one of our distribution partners, because the truth is the truth, no matter which hat you're wearing, the truth is the truth. Here is what it takes to be fundable in general. Now, there are different lenders that have different underwriting, but in general, this is it. And so it, it's almost like a glossary. It's a glossary of what does it take to become fundable. And this is a very important important step because most people don't know. It's, it's, I, you know they, they say, I want money, I need money. But, but it frankly doesn't matter how badly you want or need money. It's do you qualify for it? Are you fundable? And if you ask people randomly that, they'll often answer incorrectly. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
but but the truth comes from these elements. Do you have a lender compliant business plan that has the required components? Do you have a commercial lease that has the required components? Do you have a business entity that's truly compliant? Do you have a list of collateral that you can legally and ethically pledge to the lender for the loan? Do you have accurate and complete and current financial statements to present to the lender? And are you credit worthy? So that's essentially what we do with the grant is we help people have all of these things, but we have a big problem. Our problem is most people, they really don't care about any of this. They just want the money, right? Just get me the money, skip all this bullshit, just get me the money. But they're missing the most basic level of financial literacy is you can't just want money or need money. You must qualify for it. But the good news is we know the formula. You and I know the formula that anyone can get business funding. And guess what? We tell the world what it is and we offer to help them with all those elements. So if you're someone that's looking for funding, or to start or grow a business, I'd recommend going to 509pacific.org, go down here to the SBA checklist, which is the page that we're on, and complete this checklist. I'm going to go through and complete this checklist with uh, one of you in kind of a, a role play, because conversely, if you're one of our distribution partners, this is probably the best tool to help the prospect, the entrepreneur, have the light bulb go off to realize, ah, now I see why I need this. So we'll just role play. And we have, um, we have uh, Eric, we'll pick on Eric. Uh, so Eric's one of our distribution partners. So if I were visiting with Eric, what I would do is I would either in person or on the phone, I'd say, Eric, what I want to do is I want to take you through a quick checklist. It's essentially a funding checklist and it lets us know, do you qualify for funding now or is there anything that you need assistance with that we could help you with through our grant subsidized program? Do you have five minutes, Eric, so we can go through and see if you qualify now or if not, what needs to be worked on? Now, if Eric is serious at all about getting funding, five minutes to answer a few questions is pretty reasonable. So then, again, I could do this in person or on the phone with Eric. So I'd put in Eric's information, and so now I'm, I'm here on the first check mark. I don't like just giving this out to Eric or prospects because they'll read it and they'll make their own inferences of what it means. In many cases, they won't understand it because the, the glossary is up here. Now, you might say, well, Tom, if, if the glossary is up here and the questions are down here, why are they separated? Well, we tried putting the full glossary with the questions, but these became so long that it was a distraction. So the glossary is here that you could use if you're walking someone through, like I'm going to walk through Eric in this pretend conversation. So I'd say, okay, Eric, first thing I need to know is do you have a good business plan? Now, when I say a good business plan, I'm talking about a lender compliant business plan. It, it truly outlines what your business is, what it does, who the owners are, how much funding you need, what you're going to use the money for, the business owner's background, et cetera. So what, what do you see that I did there? Kind of pause the role play. So I'm using this as the question, but I'm explaining it using the glossary term, because if you don't explain this, then Eric can think, oh yeah, I have something written on a napkin. Yeah, I'm good to go. But but that's not what we're asking is if Eric has something on a napkin, we're trying to determine, does he have a, self, a, a lender compliant business plan? More to it. So either he's going to say, yep, I got that covered. I'm in good shape. Or no, I need some help with it. And so that's why these questions are worded this way. It's not meant to say, oh, you're a failure, you're disqualified because you don't have it. It just simply means, well, we know what you need for funding and we can help you with whatever you need. But if it's not broke, why fix it? So Eric, you're smart. You know what you have. I don't know what you have. So we're going to go through this quick five-minute assessment so I can get caught up with you. Make sense? 
All right, so either he has it or he doesn't have it. If he needs help with it, then we check the box. If he already has it, then we don't check the box. Okay, great. Second question I have, and sometimes I'll skip down to the third bullet just uh, between you and I, and I'll say, all right, Eric, so for this capital raise that you're wanting, is that going to be for a business that you currently have? Or Eric, do we need to form a new business for the capital raise? And again, don't worry about the cost. The, the grant will cover the cost of filing with Secretary of State. So it's not, a, it's not a money issue. We're just asking, do you have a compliant business entity now? Now, if he says yes, we may want to dig a little deeper because what we know is, for instance, well, I, I would ask Eric, if, if, if Eric said, yes, I've got a compliant business. I said, okay, great, Eric, a couple follow-up questions. What was the approximate month and year that the business was started? If he says anything before this calendar year, then I'm going to ask, oh, great, you did file your tax returns for last year. You would be surprised by how many people don't file tax returns for their businesses. And they'll have an excuse and a reason, but that's a big problem when we go for funding to say, oh, we didn't file taxes. So what's the point? The point is we need to find out if the client already, prospective client, already has a business entity for the capital raise. If so, that's great. If not, that's fine. Grant covers it, but we just, we need to know. We need to know. With that, then I like to bounce back up. And so uh, let's say that Eric does need a business plan, which most people will. Very few people have a really good business plan that's ready to be submitted for funding. And I would say 75% of the people that we talk to want us to form a new entity for the capital raise, either because they don't have an entity or the entity they have is not in good standing. So then I bounce back up to number two. All right, Eric, so we're going to form a new business. I'm, I'm with you there, and, and we do that for free. It's covered by the grant. Now, what's really important when we form a business is it has an address. And this doesn't mean, Eric, where you work from. You can work from your Scooby-Doo underwear and your, your back bedroom from your house if you want. But, but there needs to be an official address. The official address needs to have a commercial lease to meet the lender requirements. And so, again, you can kind of cheat and go back up here to the glossary and then explain to the prospect what that means. Because if you just ask, hey, hey, do you need a commercial lease? Nine out of 10 people are going to say, no, I don't want that. I just want funding because they don't understand the cause and effect, the qualifications. So I'd say, well, Eric, what you need to know is that when we apply for funding, the business itself Sorry, the business itself that's applying for the loan needs to have a lease. So it needs to be in that business's name, not in some other business's name. The lease terms need to match the loan term. What, what does that mean? Eric might say, well, what does that mean? That's nonsense to me. Well, Eric, usually bigger business loans will have a 10-year repayment term, right? You see 10 years here and 10 years here. It could even be longer than 10 years. But what does that mean? The lease needs to show that it's at least for 10 years. You can say, wait, I don't have that. No problem. We can cover that. But, but understand when we're going through this and educating people, it's not like you and I are making stuff, clean it up, stuff up and just pulling it out of an orifice. These are the underwriting guidelines. Of course, they don't know it. That's why they need this conversation between you and them is to understand what it takes to be fundable. Also, it must have provisions in the lease that says that the lender has superior rights to the landlord. So what's the point? There's some specific language that must be in the commercial lease. There's some specific content that needs to be in the business plan. Most people don't know what you and I know, and that's why most people get declined. But the great news is you and I know it, we can teach them, and then we can help them implement. So very rarely will they have a qualifying commercial lease. So it's fine. So again, this is the opposite of what people are used to. People are used to going to a questionnaire and if they don't have everything, then they're declined. They're told to go on, go, go figure it out on your own. Well, no, we're gonna help you regardless if you have all checks or no checks, but we need to know what our starting point is. All right, and so then the next question, we're, we're halfway done, Eric. There's six qualifying elements, and we're on number four now. So, uh, Eric, on this one, this is about collateral for your business. 
So, and, and this is what I like to do. I go out of order a little bit. So I'd say, Eric, uh, but before I get to that, let me ask you, how much funding are you looking for for your business? And let's just say he says 250000 It doesn't matter what he says. Whatever he says is truth. That's what he wants. He might say 5000 He might say $5 million. But whatever it is, it is. And then I would record that here. I, I like to fill this out for the prospect when I'm speaking with them. But if at all possible, I like them to be looking at it as we're going through it. So then I'd say, okay, great. Need $250,000. Let's say you got a blank check for two hundred fifty thousand today, Eric. What's the biggest expenditure? So you're now you've got the money in your hands. Now you're going to pay someone else because you obviously need the money for your business. What would be the biggest allocation? Would it be for real estate or equipment or inventory? And so I want to find out the largest use of funds. That doesn't tell the whole story, but that just starts to give us a feel for where we're going. He might say, oh, I want to start a franchise or I want to buy an existing business. That helps us start to ca uh, categorize where we're going to go, especially if we are going to pursue an SBA loan, because there's different SBA loans for different purposes and different dollar amounts. But we're not limited to SBA loans. OK, so with that, Eric, great. OK, so you need 250000 of that 250,000, do you have enough collateral on paper, legally and ethically, to pledge for that loan, or do you need help with that? And so most people need help with that. So again, that would be a check mark. So again, this is not some game. We're not trying to create all the check marks. We're just interviewing, we're consulting with the prospect to see what they have and what they don't have so we can figure out how to best help them. Okay, next, uh, we're almost done, Eric. Uh, on, on, in, regard, in regards to credit worthiness, there are two types of credit, isn't there, Eric? There's personal credit and business credit. Uh, if we're going to be forming a new entity, well, uh, then I know that there, there's no business credit established yet for the business. But on the personal side, uh, is your personal credit okay? If, if not, we can help with that. It's not a barrier. And then if you wanted to go up to the cheat sheet, what you could see is it says... Or if we're going to do an SBA, now, again, there's lots of loans other than SBAs, but we're going to need a minimum, a minimum of a 140 FICO. So chances are your prospect won't even know what their FICO SBSS score is. There's a good chance they've never even heard about it. And if you told them, well, you need at least a 140, they'd say, what, are you on drugs? Right? Credit scores don't even go that low. It's because they don't know what they don't know. Right? You're, you're an expert. And you've got to dumb it down for people because if you start acting like everyone else has the same level of expertise that you have, you're going to be sorely disappointed. So you can see the point. We can go through the questions and we can use the glossary to elaborate. It's not that complicated. You don't have to be an expert in all that we do to assess a client. Some of you that are distribution partners have said, hey, I want leads, leads, leads. Great. Well, I'm showing you what we need you to do with the leads. And there's going to be a step after this, of course, what we call the call to action. But we need to be able to assess the client to determine what they need help with, what they don't, and to fill this out. So let me pause there. I'll, I'll get to the call to action in a second. Anyone have questions on the relevance, the use, the process of filling out the checklist? It, it's very important to help people connect the dots for the reason I said before. People want money, they need money, but often they don't know that they need to qualify. Or if they do know they need to qualify, they don't know what it takes. Well, we tell the world, here is what it takes to qualify for typical business loans. But we don't want to just tell them, we want to assess where they're at. Everyone good with that? All right, Frederick asked about which type of loans we're going to facilitate, which isn't where I'm at in the process yet, but any type, right? We're, we're not limited to one type of funding, Frederick. We're helping clients get fundable, and then we have a lender match software that takes the criteria, what we call the mitigating circumstances of the client, and matches them to the right lender and the right loan program. So the system will tell us where to go for funding. Okay, so what have we covered so far? 
509pacific.org is the website where these resources are. If you're looking for funding for yourself, I would recommend coming and completing the checklist. If you'd like our help, of course, we can help you and you can call us. If you're a distribution partner, then this checklist is a very effective way of making our program, our resources relevant to the client. And Bill's asking, well, he's not a white label, not a distribution partner, then you'd go to the white label partner bill. And then this is where you'd become a distribution partner. There's, there's no cost to do that. Okay, but let, let's get back to where we were. So we, we've covered, we've, we have someone and we've walked them through the checklist. We, we've hit send, we did the submission. So now we have a, a snapshot of the starting point, the current status of the client, of the prospective client, I should say. That's great. What do we do with them then? What I would recommend is let's move them forward and teach them what it means to have these elements. And that's on the entrepreneurship program. So a different grant that we applied for and received, and for those of you that came on late, if any of you want to get involved with grants, it's really not that difficult, but you do need to have a qualifying entity of 51C3. We can help you set that up and then you apply for grants. One of the grants we received is to administer the free entrepreneurship funding program. This is a learning curriculum. Do you know what it costs? It costs zero cost zero to you, cost zero to the participant. It's free. So it's not like someone went through this checklist and it's like, oh, all you're trying to do is just get me sized up so you can sell me some shit. No, I'm determining if you would benefit from this free resource that we have that will take it to the next level. What we'll do over four weeks with each participant is dig deep into these four categories, teach them, and then help them apply it to their business. And again, how much does it cost for them to go through this? Zero. Zero. It costs zero. Now, let's talk about the logistics, though. We have our general classes where people register here from our website, and this is the registration. You can see it. Would you want to drive people to this registration page? Typically, no. No, you would not want to drive people here. Well, what are you going to do with them? Because this is kind of our registration page. We're going to provide you for free a registration page. That way, it's your prospects going into your class. We'll still teach it. How much for free? It's not, not There's not some string attached. But what we want each of you to do we call this in aggregate a workshop. This is one workshop composed of four weeks, entrepreneurship funding program. So what we offer to do with each of you, every, there's 721 of you on today. We literally are offering for all 721 of you, plus anyone that listens to recording, to set up a workshop or multiple workshops, and, and it's for your sphere of influence. So in other words, when you're driving people through the checklist, what's the, the appropriate next step? It is to bring them over to your workshop, which you'll have a link for. Now, there are some advanced strategies. Let's take uh, Mr. Barker, who's on. And we've had, I think, six or seven of you this week, like Mr. Barker, he's one of those, who has gone out and he's interfaced with key influencers. So for Mr. Barker, it was a faith-based leader. Some of you are going to chambers of commerce. Some of you are going to accountants and bookkeepers. But the point is, if you go to someone that has a sphere of influence over a group of small businesses, then we can set up a workshop collaboratively with them. And you might say, well, that sounds great. How would I do that? Well, guess what? 509pacific.org, go down here to our, let's go to our homepage. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, my mistake. Go to the, the white label partner page, and it's right here. So this is where we teach. I'm sorry, I got distracted there. This is where we teach about how to work with community leaders. So if you don't know how to do that, it's okay. 509pacific.org. 
on the white label partner page, this is where you get plugged in if you want to work with us and get paid to help educate people. But what we're talking about now is right here. So this is the information. So what does that mean? What, what did Mr. Barker do? Let's use him as a case study. So he took the press release, which we provide for free in editable format. He removed our information. He put his organization's information on it. Very simple, Microsoft Word. Then he started connecting with faith-based leaders. And this is not just about faith-based leaders. I'll talk more about that in a moment, but we'll just call them community leaders or influencers. He shared his press release that generated interest. And so then what did Mr. Barker do? He scheduled a three-way call. So he used our Calendly. And so yesterday at 4 p.m. Central, he and I and the faith-based leader had a conversation. And we said, yes, yes, yes. We would love to partner with your church and help your congregation be economically empowered. Let me pause for a moment. What do you and I know about Dave Ramsey? Dave Ramsey has made millions, tens of millions of dollars by taking financial literacy out to the community level, to churches, to community organizations, and he teaches what's called Financial Peace University to help people learn about personal credit, how to save money and budget and all that. That's not what you and I do. What you and I do is business finance, business literacy, business credit. So it's a close analogy that, that Dave Ramsey's already proven that this type of community model works. Now you can plug into it. And what does it cost you to do so? Nothing. You come over here and you become a white label partner right here. So then you take the press release. What Mr. Barker did is then he introduced it to the faith-based leader. We had a three-way call. And essentially what we discussed was this and how we would like to work with her church and educate her congregation. She was very, very receptive, by the way. But she might have said, she, she didn't say this, but she might have said, well, wait, I'm a church. I'm not a chamber of commerce. I, I don't have just a bunch of business owners. I have a, a cross-section of, of people. Some have jobs and some are retired and some are young. Sure, sure. But statistically, one out of three Americans want to own their own business. But usually it's knowledge and capital that keeps them from it. So even if you had a small church with 100 people in the congregation, statistically, about 30, 35 of them, this is relevant to. So this is so relevant, we can go to general populations. But what happened, and, and Mr. Barker could confirm this, is we reviewed this with her. She was very interested. She said yes. And she said, she not only said yes, but she told Mr. Barker, I will get you in front of five other faith-based leaders so you can do this at their churches too. And you can tell them, I told them to have you call them. So once we get out and we start being recognized, when, well, let me change it. You, 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 because as a white label partner, this is you running your business. We're not selling you anything. We'll provide all the implementation. You do the community outreach. And you make 11 grand for each person that goes through. Now, you might say, well, where does this 11,000 come from, Tom? That doesn't make sense. You know, we were over here talking about free education. How in the world am I going to make 11,000? Here's where the rubber hits the road. Statistically, between 90 and 91% of the people that go through the four week curriculum here will enroll in our fee-based program. The fee-based program provides more deliverables. Provides it, So that's where we're paying for the cost of the Secretary of State so the client doesn't have to. That's where we're providing, if we go back to the checklist, it, it's where we're providing the deliverables. So we're providing the business plan. We're providing the commercial lease. We're setting up the entity. We're providing the collateral. We're improving their credit. We're building their financial reports. So we have education, teaching here, and then they can do it on their own, or they can enroll in the fee-based program through you, through the white label partner, and that's the answer of where you make your 11000 And again, I know a lot of you are very successful, and an extra 11000 just doesn't seem like much, but 
let's just do the math again. If we have a class of 10 people, statistically nine out of the 10 will move forward. That's been our average. Well, nine times 11,000, my friend, is damn near $100,000 from one class. And we could be having multiple classes with multiple churches, multiple chambers, multiple key influencers. Now, people can enroll just directly. They don't have to go through the curriculum first. But for those of you that are not very good closers, forgive me for saying it, some of you aren't, if you're not a very good closer, then don't pitch. Just guide them through the free education. And again, organically, about nine out of 10 will move forward. How could you possibly create a better funnel? So let's review the synopsis. Become a white label partner, no cost. We'll provide you the tools, training. We'll do all the teaching. We'll do all the implementation. We even provide you the leads if you need, but it would be nice if you could do that too. But you help people understand, you, you do the assessment. That's really your role. You do the assessment. And if they're interested in moving forward, which most will be, then you enroll them in the workshop. Your workshop, the workshop that we set up for you for free. We create a registration link for free. We'll teach the class for free. There's, there's no gotchas. And then of these people that we educate, and you're welcome to go through the class as well, of course. You know, how do you register? Right here. So this is the general registration. We'll create a registration link for you. So for example, for Mr. Barker, and then who is the other? Someone set one of these up yesterday. Damn, I can't remember his name. With a, a an African-American chamber of commerce. I can't. Mr. Allen, Mr. Allen. And is Mr. Allen on here today? No, he's not. So Mr. Allen set a workshop up yesterday. It starts Monday, the 16th at 1.30 p.m. Central. It's for four weeks. And that is for an African-American chamber that is agreed. So we, we're, we're co-branding it with them. So with that, what questions do you have? I mean, I, I think we've created a turnkey way for you to help people build their financial literacy and monetize it by earning an adult income by helping them. What questions, comments, concerns do you have? If you feel comfortable, you can type it into the Q&A, the question and answer box. It's like a, a chat box in Zoom, or you can reach us directly. So we're real people doing what we promise. It's legal, it's ethical, and it's absolutely needed. If you don't think it's needed, you're an elitist, and, and that's not me being mean to you or, or name calling, but you may be so wealthy and you have so much money and your credit's so good and you have such access to capital that you don't think any of this is necessary. It's like, ah, people go fucking figure it out on their own. But that's not our mindset. Our mindset is to teach people how to fish, to teach people how to, to be successful. And that's our model. And we're proud of it. We'd love to work with you, to collaborate with you. If you're not a white label partner, you know how to become one. If you have questions, call us, email us, anything else we can do for you today. All right. Well, let us know what we can do. We'll set some workshops up together. You'll make some adult money. We'll help people. Have a great day, great weekend. We'll talk to you back Monday morning, same time, same place. Thanks. Bye.